Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. That was absolutely perfect. Hello and welcome to World of One Piece, a series where you all get to take a break from my opinions and look at someone else's experience with the series. Today we are featuring the delightful, I'm, uh, I'm just assuming you're delightful in advance, Eva Hart. Welcome to the channel, Eva. Hello, thank you for having me. It is my absolute pleasure. Now tell us a bit about yourself. Where are you from? How old are you? What do you do for a living? Who is the real Eva? Well, I am 25. I live in the UK and I'm currently doing a PhD in biomedical science. That sounds incredible. That makes you the second PhD candidate we've had on the show. Mm, we should definitely start a PhD One Piece club. I think we should, yes. There seem to be enough members to go for it. Though. <laughs> what in particular are you studying as part of your PhD? Uh, I'm looking at a tropical disease um, called leishmania. Mm. Does it bear any resemblance to the disease that, say, Nami may have caught from Little Garden? Wow, uh, a little bit, in that it's spread by an insect, so... Basically the same thing, I mean. Essentially the same thing, yeah. Does it get deadly? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nasty. Um, so, hence the research. And, and just as a heads up, where would one contract this deadly disease? Uh, quite a few places. South America, Middle East, Africa, uh, Southern Europe, maybe. Jesus, I've been to Spain. I didn't realise I was taking well, my life into my hands. <laughs> it's mainly only in dogs in Spain, but you never know. Oh, well, so where exactly in the UK are you from? So I'm from Cheshire, but I currently live in Lancaster. Lancaster. All right. So if I know my geography right, that is about near Liverpool. I didn't have to look that up on a map or anything. Yeah, it's near Liverpool and near Manchester, which you might have heard of as well. I have, yes. Mainly for your uh, football team. I believe you call it football over there. Yeah, that's the correct term, football. Yeah. We called it soccer when I was growing up. Football is a very recent thing for me. Okay. I'll let you off. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, as a resident of Northern England, how did you first become aware of One Piece? Um, it was quite just a random stumble upon moment, really. Back when I was in high school, so when I was around 15 or 16, I can't exactly remember, I was looking up for some pictures of Robin, as in Batman and Robin, and I came across Robin, you might have guessed, uh, from One Piece. I thought she was really cool, and obviously I didn't really care much about my homework, so I just started looking up who she was and where she was from, and I came across a clip of her shouting down the iconic scene at Annie's lobby to Luffy, Luffy. And I was like, I have to watch this. This is amazing. And I didn't even know who the characters were, but I knew it was amazing. So I just went to find the star and didn't realize how many episodes there were and therefore fell into the big hole of One Piece. Yes, any sloppy. So that would have been what, 300 and something episodes, like 300s, early 400s. Yep. I thought it'd be maybe like 50. I was wrong. Oh, oh my, yes, you were very wrong. But I'm still watching. Oh, really? So whereabouts are you up to in the series? So I kind of moved on to the manga last year. So I'm not, I don't, I've good, stopped. Good, <laughs> I stopped the anime at Zo, but I'm up to the end of Reverie in the manga. Ooh, so just starting Wano, which I guess we all are because it hasn't really gone on for that many chapters as of yet. Yep, no, I have not entered Wano yet, so I'm pretty excited. Fantastic. So what do you think of current events at the Reverie then? I loved it. Um, it was pretty amazing. A lot of big reveals, a lot of amazing meetups of characters we haven't seen we haven't seen for so long. So I was pretty excited. Yeah, it was a pretty action-packed six chapters. Probably one of the shortest arcs in the entire series, if not the shortest. Yep, I would have not minded if it had gone on for another six chapters, really. I, I really like the world building in One Piece, so I'm pretty happy with just finding out more about everything. Yeah, I think most fans feel very similarly. They were very kind of annoyed when Reverie just ended suddenly and we began Wano, just because of all the questions that were thrown and the lack of answers in a very Oda-esque fashion. Yeah... Got to get used to that. I still, I'm still not used to it, but I would have liked some answers. <laughs> still not used to it. What? Ten years later, having started One Piece. Yeah, I just hope for answers. I thought it might have finished by now, actually, by the time I caught up, and it hadn't. But I'm quite happy just watching, reading. I mean, actually, yeah. If ten, twelve years ago you would have asked me if One Piece is still running, I would have said that yeah, it was probably over by now. I, I was wrong. We all were. Happily wrong. Very happily wrong. Oh yeah. Very good then. Who would be your most favourite character in the series? Oh, that is a hard question because there are so many amazing characters. Feel free to give multiple answers. Oh, good. I will. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, Luffy is the obvious choice um, because he's amazing. And if I didn't like him, I probably wouldn't be still watching. 
But I love Robin. She's probably my favourite straw hat after Luffy. Mainly because she's what got me into the series as a whole, I guess. And she's just super cool. I love her dark sense of humour. And her power's pretty cool as well, although she doesn't get to use it as much as I would like. Well, yeah, that's going to be my next question. As such a huge Robin fan, what do you think of the way that she normally gets used in the story, at least like post time skip? Yeah, it's annoying. Um, but I guess I'm kind of used to it, her be not being full center in the action. I would love her to have more fights, but she doesn't. Not many other female straw hats do nowadays which is kind of sad. It's very sad. I think the last time Robin had a fight, like a proper fight, was during the Skypea arc. <laughs> yep, no, she needs more fights. Um, yeah. But I like that she has other roles as of reading Poneglyphs, and like she does stuff, but just not enough stuff. She does. It's similar to Nami in that respect, whereas, you know, she's the navigator, and without her, everyone would be lost. I just, I wish they would kick some more ass. Yeah, because they can. I mean, her, her devil fruit is really interesting, and yet we don't see it enough. Um, so yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, her devil fruit is absurdly powerful, especially when she was showing it off on Dressrosa. Yeah, maybe soon. Maybe in Wano. I mean, I can hope. It's better be in Wano, because it's very long overdue. All right, well, moving to the flip side of that question, then, who would be your least favorite character in the series? I mean, I feel like I don't like the standard characters that you have to hate, like Hody and Caribou. Um, I'm not I'm not that keen on Treble from Dressrosa. He was kind of rubbish. Yeah, that that's a very good answer. I heavily dislike Treble in retrospect and yeah i don't think he gets enough credit for being a shit character no he, he should he should get more credit for being shit yeah i agree <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no he yeah he just doesn't do much and when he does do things they're really annoying in the anime his voice is really annoying as well which probably doesn't help matters oh yeah like the new oh. <laughs> yeah it's just grating uh so yeah probably him i mean i'm also i don't know if this is controversial or not i'm not really a big fan of momo that much uh momonosuke yeah almost it momonosuke oh uh, i think we'll get along very well i hate momonosuke yeah i don't like i don't really like him yeah i mean i haven't like seen him do much yet so I'm, he might grow on me but currently he's not in my favors as a good character definitely not i think it's because he is a sort of annoying child stereotype which is unfortunate but yeah, child characters just don't really work in a series like this. No, except in flashbacks, maybe. Except in flashbacks when they're the child forms of characters we know and love. Yes. Although I will say that I do like Momonosuke in his dragon form. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I do like his dragon form. I agree on that. Uh, so yeah, very good answers there. Most people do say um, Caribou, Hody, uh, Vanderdecken gets said a lot. So I like that you brought up the expanded shitness of the One Piece world. But... Going to the flip side once again, what is it about One Piece that really keeps you invested in the series? Uh, I think it just has, it has a perfect mix of great characters, great action, and also amazing world building. So it keeps your interest. There's, yeah, I just, I love all the big fights in the arcs, but I also like the really quiet moments where they like kind of the rest of the world find out what's happening and you see what's happening and the further impacts of their actions. It's just really well done. I think Oda just has a knack for storytelling. So in conclusion, everything. Yeah. <laughs> It ticks all the boxes, and I haven't found many series that do that as well as One Piece yet. No, definitely not. You say you haven't found many. Just to get off One Piece for a second, um, what other series would you have found that tick all those boxes? Uh, I really like Kill la Kill. Nice, nice choice. And, I mean, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is amazing. But yeah, Kill the Kill is probably one of my favorite animes of all time, actually, along with Brotherhood. Brotherhood was brilliant. It was. It it knocked one piece off my top for a little bit, but then it, but it finished, so yeah. It definitely knocked it off my uh, top anime, which One Piece was never up there on. So I don't really mind the anime that much, which I feel like is a Ooh. another controversial opinion. Point of contention, yes. Yeah, I feel like you have, I mean, you have to watch it properly. As in, if I was watching it week to week, I would probably tear my, my eyes out. But if you binge watch it with breaks, it works quite well. In my opinion. I guess, yeah, and fast-forwarding through all of the recaps and etc. Yeah, yeah, that's just... Yeah. But, I, yeah, I like it. <laughs> uh, why did you... Did you stop watching the anime? Is that what you said after Zo? Or was that just you started reading the manga as well as? Uh, I started reading as well as, but I haven't gone back to the anime, which is probably because the man manga's so good, but also because I like to binge-watch it, a whole arc in one, one setting, or one over, like, a few months. So I'm waiting for it to finish... Uh, Whole Cake Island, then I'll watch it. Uh, you'll be waiting for quite some time. Yep. <laughs> but that's how I've been 
<laughs> that's what I'm used to, so I can wait. I think that's a nice way to go about it rather than watching it week to week and just being sort of consistently disappointed at how slow the pacing is. Yeah, the pacing is, is bad. Um, I actually didn't think it was as bad as it has been for the start of Dress Rosa, which, yeah, but then towards the end it did get terrible again hey yeah oh dress rosa let's not go there i seem to go there in every interview um but speaking of arcs which arc in the series did you find most enjoyable to watch and or read probably gotta be water seven and Annie's lobby kind of smashed into one um that was just it was just really good yep yeah the water seven saga which was exactly the era that you got into one piece as well yeah so makes sense uh but i did i did love dress rosa Jess Rosa as well. And so. Ah, fantastic. Another Zoe lover. I don't find many people that agree with me about how fun Zoe is. He's really fun. And Nekomamushi is amazing. So. Yes, he is, isn't he? Despite being a dog person, Nekomamushi is probably my favorite mink. Yeah, as a cat person, he definitely is. <laughs> Yeah, oh, but you've got so many options as a cat person. You could have Pedro, you could have Pet Coms, you could have, what is it, one of the Musketeers, Sicilian? Yeah, I'm spoiled, but it's still Nekama Mushi. It's a fair enough choice. Uh, let's get back to uh, Water 7 and any Slobby, though. What is it about that saga, I guess, that really sets it above the rest of One Piece for you? I think a lot happens, um, I like, as, in, <laughs> as in there's a lot of drama in the Straw Hats. It's the first time we really see lots of rifts forming with Usopp leaving, and then Robin leaving, and then, yeah, it's just, it's really different from the arcs that come before it in that respect, I guess. And I really like the setting of Water 7 itself, and the sea train is pretty, pretty damn cool. Yep, very good. I really love the setting of Water 7, actually. If I was to visit an island in the Grand Line, Water 7 would be pretty high up there, because it's like Venice, but cooler. <laughs> it is like Venice, but cooler. <laughs> I would agree. <laughs> And yeah, the part about the sea train was really cool because it felt like One Piece was evolving because that was the first sort of technology on that scale we'd ever seen. Yeah, it was just fun and cool and dark, very dark. Yeah, I think that was another thing that I really like about it. I like how um, how dark it gets and how they have to go and convince Robin to come back. And again, that's that's what got me into the series and actually seeing it happening and how it was happening was really amazing. And I just love the scene scenes in, in his lobby where they're just all fight, standing together and fighting for her. Yeah. The characters, are, the characters between the crew were amazing and really well developed in that in the arc. They were very brilliantly. Um, that is also the point in which I caught up to the series when I was reading it during the Annie Slobby arc. Though so it holds a special place in my heart. Yeah. So which arc in the series was the least enjoyable to you? I would say definitely Fisherman Island arc. It had just been building up for so long. We'd had the time skip and then it was just quite boring in my opinion. <laughs> and slow Cody <laughs> Cody Vanderdecken Shirahoshi just multiple things I did not like and it really slowed me down watching the anime because the anime was pretty terrible in that arc and yeah it just took me far too long to get through it than it should have for one piece I agree entirely there Fishman Island was far too long. The villains were... Uh, Shirahoshi is someone I appreciate in retrospect, maybe. I just, yeah. And after building up for it, you know, like a decade, it just it just ended up not being worth it. No, but we got through it. And then it was on to a lot better arc, so it's fine now. Yeah. <laughs> Punk Hazard, another uh, fan favorite. I say that sarcastically. I like Punk Hazard. <laughs> Yeah? What do you like about Punk Hazard? I mean, there's a lot to like about it, but specifically, why did you enjoy it? I like Monet. He's a great character. I like... I don't really know. I think it, it's probably because I like Dress Rosa so much, and it's the build-up to Dress Rosa. I, I really liked Law's reintroduction. I wasn't expecting that at all, and I was like, whoa! And it was just... he was just amazing, because he's a great character. Um, yeah, there were parts of, about it I didn't like. Like, the whole Caesar plotline was a bit rubbish. But most of it, I enjoyed. Has Caesar grown on you through Dress Rosa and Hawk at Kyland? Yes, in a, in a he's a annoying but funny character way. In a very sort of, it's a disease that's infected me, but I've learned to live with it kind of way. <laughs> yeah, no, he's okay. I actually quite like Caesar these days, but going back on Punk Hazard, I still hate him. He also has an annoying voice in the anime. An alright laugh, though. It's definitely distinctive. <laughs> distinctive. That's probably the fairest way you could describe Caesar. Yeah. Alright, so. What devil fruit would you most like to have? And why? Uh, 
There are so many again. Once again, feel free to state multiple answers. Okay. I think Marco's is definitely the coolest. Uh, the Phoenix. I would love to have that one. Um, I also like Perona's quite a lot as well. The horror horror. Horror 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 horror. <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> In fact, she's a character I want to see more of uh, while we're on her devil fruit. Perona. Yeah, I would love to see more of Perona. We need more Perona. Um, are you one of... Just while we're on Perona, are you one of the people who uh, think she got married to Mihawk on that island Shanks was on? No, I've never heard that before. It was in one of the cover stories of Shanks reacting to one of Luffy's bounties. He was on an island for a certain person's wedding, and it looked like it suspiciously could have been uh, Kuregana Island, which is Mihawk's. Oh. And given that there are only two people who live on that island, you know? Interesting. Yeah, I can, I've i missed a lot of cover stories when I was watching the anime only. But that, yeah, I did not know that was a thing, but... Ooh. Oh, maybe that would be cool potentially a thing very much wild speculation though okay hmm. anyway regardless i'd like to see more of perona and her fruit yeah her devil fruit it seems like it could be powered up quite a lot and be quite useful it's quite devastating actually i mean not everyone is usopp yeah most people would be taken down in a single shot yep so that would definitely be a, a good one to have a good one so uh marco's fruit and perona's fruit for you then yep very good. Very, very good. So what would be your most memorable moment in the series? Is it Robin? <laughs> it's probably Robin, I want to live. But I think another moment a lot earlier on that made me definitely take notice of One Piece was Nami's sitting, um, stabbing her arm and asking Luffy for help. That's pretty, mm. a pretty good, uh, memorable moment for me. Definitely, yes. I think that was on my top five most memorable moments list, along with Robin's I Want to Live. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, for, for characters who kind of get shoved to the background when it comes to the fighting, the women really do have most of the memorable moments. <laughs> Interesting, that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. They, yeah, they have some very memorable moments and definitely good character, good character development and flashback. Yeah, well, they did. They did. Past tense. They will again. You have to be positive. I hope so. I actually hope that all of the Straw Hats get a second flashback like we've seen with Luffy and now Sanji. Yeah, Zoro needs more flashbacks. He has ridiculously little. Yeah, I think his flashback was something like six pages long in total. Yeah, we need more details about him. At the same time, he's a fairly simple guy. We get what he's about. Yeah. I actually had a possible theory that Green Bull would be his mother or father. Yep. <laughs> Uh, you almost made me spit out my water there. Um, <laughs> but then she was, it was this a guy, is, so I was wrong. Yeah, it was clear. I mean, might not be a guy, chances are. Well, this was before it was Maybe. revealed as a guy. I was hoping it would be a female character because I want more female I, characters. The only thing that makes us think he's a guy is that he's talking about beautiful ladies. Okay, yeah. But it probably 99% is a guy. Anyway, that was a theory I had, but... Nice. Intriguing theory. I like your way of thinking. So, it's time to put that brain to the test. Okay. Are you ready for One Piece trivia? Ah, uh, I guess so. So, you probably know how this works vaguely. I have six questions for you in total. Three of them are easy. Two of them are medium. One of them is hard. Mm. Okay. And combined, they can give you a total possible score of 10 points, with the easy questions being worth one point, medium two, and the hard three. Okay, I'm ready. Excellent. Starting with the easy questions. In what village did Nami grow up? Uh, Kokoyashi? Kokoyashi is correct. Oh, very good. We're off to a very good start. Possible one out of one. Going well so far. After he was defeated by Luffy, which pirate did Buggy form an alliance with in order to seek revenge? Uh, Alvida? Is correct again. Yay. And final easy question. Which of the ancient weapons did Sir Crocodile seek at Alabasta? Oh, uh, I have a 50-50 chance. Um, I think... Pluton? Pluton is correct. Yeah. Very well done. Although I'm not sure how you had a 50-50 chance. Oh, because that, well, I, re <laughs> I remembered what one of them was. Uh, so what, you remembered what she, yeah. what she was? Yeah, I'm not going to forget that. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right, well, fantastic. Three out of three. This is brilliant. Let's move on to the medium questions. Okay. Who was the first Logia Devil Fruit user introduced in the series? Ah, uh, Smoker? Is 100% correct. Yes. And it's something that my viewers will never let me forget because in two videos now I have accidentally stated that it was Crocodile. Oh dear. The fool I am. Mm. 
During the first Sabadi Archipelago arc, which member of the Supernovas had the lowest bounty? Oh, uh, probably Bonnie. Um, yeah, I'm not sure, but let's go Bonnie. You know, I probably would have said Bonnie as well. And if not Bonnie, Zoro, it's actually a Rouge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Weirdly enough, the Mad Monk had a bounty of only 108 million. Okay. Still, we're not doing too bad here. You've got five out of seven, with a chance for three more points by answering this question correctly. I believe in you. Okay. All right. Your hard question is, Charlotte Lin Lin, aka Big Mom, has how many daughters? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm going to have to guess. Ooh. Let's go 35. It was 39. Oh, so you were in the Brad ballpark, but hey, that's why it's a hard question. So congratulations, you have managed to score a 5 out of 10, which, you know, it's a pass mark. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that. Take that, I mean, that's all you really need to get the PhD, right? <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and with that, I'm going to ask you one final question. What is the One Piece? Hmm. Uh, I feel like the popular answer is buggy. Yep, you'd be <laughs> correct. But I I have other ideas. <laughs> Please do share. I would love to hear another idea yeah. that's not buggy for a change. Yeah, uh, I think it'll be some form of evidence of the void century. So either, I don't know, some map or recording of the news or like a newspaper from the Void Century, something like that. Um, like maybe like the one piece of evidence of the Void Century. <laughs> I like what you did there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I don't think it really matters what it is. I haven't really thought about it that much because I don't think it's going to be the most important thing at the ending of One Piece at all. But it will still be interesting. Would you be disappointed if there was no One Piece? Probably not. No, I could see that happening. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Mm. I think well, that's what Luffy said. It's all about the journey. It is all about the journey. But it'd be funny if someone who wanted it to be treasure got there and it was not treasure. That'd be quite amusing. I, yeah, I don't really know. And I'm happy to wait and find out. Yep. And in the end, it doesn't really matter. Nope. Well, thank you very much for sharing your perspective, Eva. As always, it's been an absolute pleasure not just talking to myself for a change. You're very welcome. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And if you'd like to be featured on the next World of One Piece, then all you need to do is become a Grand Line Review patron. Upon becoming a patron of any tier, your name automatically goes into the draw to become my next guest. And very, very importantly, your name then stays in the draw for all subsequent episodes throughout your tenure as a patron. With that said, I'd like to thank Eva once more for being an amazing guest, and I look forward to interviewing our next lucky individual soon. This has been the Grand Line Review, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>